for coming tonight. Thank you for meeting our request for your past. Now, we have a work slide presentation. I'm going to walk through that and I want to add live a little bit. First off, as a principal, I am only as successful as you, the parents, the communities allow me to be. And that in turn relates to your children. Who I, I want to say thank you for entrusting your children to us. But also the faculty, we have a tremendous faculty here. I think that as you go around, take a look at our math department, talk to those individuals. It's one of the best distinguished math departments I've come across. Also, we have a very strong social studies department. And the new social studies teacher, Shannon Goldstein, he beat out 130 applicants to win that job. So I make sure you talk to these people, you see each department, and they're special in their own right. And I'm very proud to work with these people. Now, with that said, I want to definitely give credit to Dr. Azar, Dr. Leistel, the Assistant Superintendent. We are blessed to have what we have, and we are all grateful. But most of all, I think I have to recognize my team. Mr. Doug Kelly, who, who has created and fostered this, this carnival-like climate. So thank you, Mr. Kelly. And that's from the Queen. And I often like to say that you know what, I bring a lot to the table, but I'm nothing without my team. And I think we're a team of ideas. We discuss, we look at a number of vantage points, we try to arrive at the best possible decision we have based on the information we have at the time. Mr. Deal DeCecco, our assistant principal, brings so much to the table. Thank you, Mr. DeCecco. Her work ethic, her tech savvy, her sense of being cerebral is second to none. With that said, I also want to transition with, into my other uh, other assistant principal, Ms. Caitlin Lima. Ms. Caitlin Lima. <laughs> five years ago, we overhauled the master schedule process, and she's the point and click person to this day. She works with the team. She works within the collective bargaining agreement to give your students the most efficient schedule possible while serving all stakeholders. So I'm really grateful for what she brings to the table every day. And then, Ms. Diane Rose, who has stepped in, won a $210,000 grant for advanced manufacturing to bring that program up to standard to replace outdated equipment. And I think I'm grateful for her as well. So I want to say, we have a round of applause for her. And then this year, we, we have to introduce Mr. Steve Hathaway, the new school resource officer. You say hello. And I always fall back into SRO. And everyone's like, John, what acronym is that? SRO, school resource officer. And what's really important for you to understand, Officer Hathaway's job in this school, it's different out there, but in this school, it's not to enforce hall passes. It's not to, it's not to, arrest people, it's simply to build relationships and be a resource and make sure this place is secure. Not just in terms of a physical sense, but students are supported and they feel comfortable coming to him with questions of en enlisting advice from him. So it's about relationships, almost on par with a social worker or an adjustment counselor. I just want that out there. And Officer Hathaway is available as well, as am I. Now, with that said, I want to just talk about a couple of things. Those students who graduate from our CTE program, 87% find college places. So they can work during the day, go to school at night, or work at night and go to college during the day. And that's really important, that number, 87%, that makes us stand out. Do we have growth areas? You bet we do. And we're working on them under the leadership of Diane Rose when it comes to CTE. So we're going places on that. Also, we have a very successful athletic program. And last year we won the soccer, um, the league for soccer and, and boys, which is great. And we have much success. We make many tournament appearances. Most importantly, not only with athletics, but with the band, with the color guard, we have a strong degree of participation by the majority of our student population. And that's very important because if you're participating in activities and athletics, you're staying out of trouble. And that's what we want. 
And we want to give these kids experiences. And that's what we're doing. And again, thank Doug Kelly for that. Now, for those who don't know, the word AP, another acronym in education, it's like alphabet soup. AP, yet, the for assistant principal, but in this case, what we're referring to as advanced placement. What is advanced placement? Advanced placement is this, a course in which it's a third party curriculum taught by someone here on site to have kids take a national test. And if you get a three, four, and a five, you can often get credit from a, a college you apply to, and you can save a lot of money. What's really important here is the word third party assessment, though. And you can gain this through um, dual enrollment, you can get this through a virtual high school or ingenuity or a virtual class of some kind that's approved by the school to get, basically say that the scores and grades we receive at Dynamo Rehoboth Regional High School in those classes correspond to advanced placement. And literally 76% of our students score three, four, or five, or a five. And that's incredible. That's a, quite an accomplishment. And not only does credit have to go to these teachers, but to those students. So well done. So what's really important is that we realize that we have a comprehensive counseling department. By that I mean we have a psychologist on staff. We have two adjustment counselors, and then we have three guidance counselors. Okay, but they're all counselors, and they're all trained to handle the academic, the social and emotional needs of students. And more than ever before, we have to support students in the social and emotional needs. Not only academics, in those areas, because what's really important, and I see this in my own children, by working in the virtual experience, students work in a type of silo. They're in isolation. They experience peaks and they experience valleys emotionally. And what we want to do is make sure that when they have trouble, they ask for help. And what we often do with those students who are struggling, we work with the families and we get them outside counseling and help them out. And that's what we're looking to do when we have a very successful counseling department. I just want you to know that I want to praise them as well. Now, I'm very excited. A couple of years ago, someone said, oh, cool, that was a gimme. And I had challenged the class that all four classes, if they raised more money, or not money, but food, for the food drive, they could, Mr. Kelly could shave my head. Well, I didn't tell my wife about this, and I got in a little trouble because they broke the record and they shaved my head. I was like, <laughs> for five minutes. So, it was a lot of fun. And I, I'm looking forward, not to get my head shaved again, because I'm not sure it'll come back, but I want kids to have that on-ground experience. Kids, more than not, including my own, have often said to me, Dr. Gould, Dad, I don't want another virtual experience. And Spirit Week has a life of its own. It's fun, it's safe, kids are here, and we have a homecoming, it precedes with homecoming, and then finalizes with the Thanksgiving Day game. And I want kids to have that on-ground experience as best we can. And what this is important about, we tied the food drive to the civics project mandated by the state, by DESE, to say we're going to help those people in need, and we were already doing it beforehand. So people who are struggling benefit from the food drive, and that's in these two communities, which is really important to emphasize. So that is very exciting to me. I want to ask of all of you as parents, chain of communication. Right now, a lot of people are trying to figure it out. How do we transition back from COVID? How do we, is it seamless? Is it struggling? You know, is it a struggle? Let's figure that out together. And one of the things I often talk to parents about, they'll call up and they'll have, be upset about the coach. They'll be upset about the teacher. And sometimes, oftentimes, rightfully so. But my job as the principal is to say, to ask the question, has your child talked to the teacher? If the answer is yes, are you satisfied with the answer? Sometimes the answer is no. Have you talked to the teacher slash coach? If the answer is yes, and they're not satisfied with the answer, then it's in my court. But if the answer to that is no, I often ask that parent to talk to the coach, talk to the teacher directly, or have your student player talk to that adult directly. Now, if you're asking me, I say, you want a coaching conversation on how maybe I might approach this, 
let's open it up to that. And what often helps me is to say, I'm a dad. I understand where you're coming from. I understand this isn't quite fair. But let's talk about that. Maybe I can't give you the answer I you want, but let's have that channel of communication open. And then also, what's really important is teachers contractually have to update and submit student work on X2 once every 10 days. And what you need to do is, is check that. Find out a way to use X2, also known as Aspen. And if you need help on that, we'll try to help you give us a call. But also, if you send a teacher an email out of concern, they, have, they will respond to you within, I think, 24 to 48 hours. And then if they don't respond to you, give me a call. We'll deal with it. But give them a chance. Follow that chain of communication. Because otherwise, it breaks down. These teachers support your students, and these students have great relationships with them. And I've, and I've seen it. And I, as I walk through the hallways of this school, this year in particular, the hallways are clear. There's teaching bell to bell. There's movement. When I go into those classrooms, there's not backpacks in the aisle. There's backpacks under the desk because students are moving up and down. These students, these teachers are doing the carousel-like effect. If they're looking at primary sources, they're stuck to the wall and they're posing questions. The students have to move around the room. We are getting better at the formative assessment. We are getting better at differential instruction. And I give all the credit in the world to these teachers and these students. So one thing, and then maybe this is my working class background, for us, as administrators, it's not about rules. It's about good work habits. If your child breaks a rule, I want you to feel free to come to me and say, John, I don't agree with this rule. It's not, it, it doesn't affect their work habit. Wearing hats, we have to ask them to take their hats off for security. We have to be able to identify them on camera. And also, when you're inside, you're supposed to take your hat off. That's a good work habit. And that's an example of some of the things we talk about. Now, when but we're not into enforcing rules. We're not into throwing kids out of school. We have to emphasize good work, work habits. And every member of this administrative team, in every faculty, or just about every faculty member, I believe, is a parent. We want to put you as parents in a position to succeed. And I gotta tell you, no offense to the kids here, but parents, teenagers, from my experience, as a dad, are really hard. They can be fickle, unpredictable, and what you, you want the best for them. And we want to support you in that. And well, all kidding aside, we want to empathize, okay? And that's the message I want you to receive today. Get to know us and basically realize we are a resource for you, we're in this together. And we succeed if your child succeeds. Okay. Expectations for tonight. Get to know what we have to offer, get a sense of the DR difference, and I think you got that as you walked in today with the band and the cheerleaders. Meet our students, teachers, coaches, and advisors, and ask questions most of all. If the administration will be out in the hallways, out there helping you, student volunteers are leading these different groups. Uh, in your folder, we want you to follow the map to make sure your visit, you visit all the departments at your own pace. Please make sure to visit the courtyard for light refreshments outside. Actually, we have to test the potential of rain. Those are outside the main office on this side. And then parent-teacher conferences are November 4th for more individual time to discuss students' progress. We just haven't had enough time to get completed work and assessed work into X2. Okay, so I want to say thank you.
Welcome to English. The following slides list the English teachers and their backgrounds. These are our co-teachers. In the ninth grade, you have a choice between two classes, English 9 and English 9 Honors. All of our Honors classes require an accelerated pace, greater independence, rigorous assessments, and two additional summer reading titles. In grade 10, there is a choice between English 10 and English 10 Honors. In grade 11, there is a choice between English 11 and English 11 Honors. Grade 12, there's a choice between English 12 and English 12 Honors. In the 11th grade, you may also opt to take AP Language and Composition. In the 12th grade, you may take AP Literature and Composition. The AP classes are in place of your standard English class. We have several electives and the teachers who teach the electives are listed on the right. Feel free to contact them for information about these classes. For the last year that we were given a CPI, we achieved 99.6. This year's accountability data is also out. Eighty-six met or exceeded expectations. This is a to comparison of a state rate of 64. If you'd like to contact us directly, here are our emails. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ruth Nardozzi, and I run the radio and television broadcasting program here at Dayton Rehoboth. Uh, welcome to the studio here. Uh, we have our big green screen set up with our lighting grid in the back. Uh, we do have a secondary interviewing set here, and our control room is in the back there uh, when we do live production sets. Uh, freshmen, when you come in, uh, we'll learn the basics of filming and composition types. We do a few projects. Uh, and we see if you like it. If that's something you want to do, we, we, we put you in the program for the next three years. Uh, the sophomore year, we, we go through our OSHA 10 training to get safety certified. And we run through all of the technical experiences related to and creating content. Uh, our junior and senior year, it is a live production year. We work on some independent projects and we do our school news, which is broadcast bi-weekly. If this is something that interests you here at DR, we'd love to have you come into the studio. Hello, welcome to CTE Marketing. My name is Barry Calgill, and I'm the Marketing CTE Instructor here at Dighton Rehoboth Regional High School. I'd like to review of marketing. Um, just like the other CTE programs, the students will 
spend the first three terms of their freshman year exploring the different shops that we have here at Dyke and Rehoboth. Um, at the beginning of term four, they will select a shop that they want to continue to work in. From that point, we start doing um, kind of an introductory to marketing, business, economics. Um, we utilize some virtual business software to simulate some real life situations here in the classroom. Uh, we're fortunate that we're reestablishing our school store this year, which will also allow us to continue um, to develop those customer service skills, communication skills with both faculty and staff as they shop at the store. Um, we also, continuing on to sophomore year, we continue to get into sales, develop a marketing plan, we continue looking at investing in personal finance, uh, we look at accounting, um, we get into promotion, develop an advertising campaign. Um, I am also the advisor for both DECA, which is a extracurricular marketing club for marketing students, and also the Skills USA advisor, which both organizations are both kind of community service and also competition-based um, events where we'll um, compete outside of school with schools from other districts in the area and have a chance to move on to state and even national competitions. Um, continuing on into the junior year, um, we get into entrepreneurship, pricing, uh, we'll do a lot more work in the school store. Generally, junior, senior years are scheduled during the lunch period and the last two periods of the day. So we'll continue to allow students to, to have some hands-on experience working in our retail operation. Um, continuing on to the senior year, we continue on with different themes in marketing. We look at different career areas. Some of the topics we cover is hospitality, tourism, sports, entertainment marketing, and often are continuing developing a business plan, um, which often then turn into the senior project and research project we do um, at the end of the year for senior year, kind of a big culminating um, activity. We continue all years doing career prep, resume development, cover letter writing, interviewing practice, regularly researching jobs out there, looking at the future forecast of jobs and seeing where most likely the, the best chance for gaining um, good employment upon the completion of high school or if you continue on to college, um, certainly having an idea of where um, your best options are upon um, completing the program. I look forward to seeing any of you. If you have any questions, um, feel free to contact the school. I'd be happy to discuss the marketing program with you further. Have a good day. Hi, and welcome to Dighton Rehoboth Regional High School's Math Department. The Math Department encourages and provides students with the opportunity to use a variety of methods to solve problems. Our main focus is to solve problems graphically, algebraically, and utilize appropriate tools. One tool in specific that we would like our students to be comfortable with using is the TI-8384 graphing calculator. It is highly recommended for all classes and is required for the honors and AP level. I begin to introduce our math teachers here in the math department. Starting off, we have William Bregnard and Hilary Burnham. Our next two teachers are Kylie D'Ambrosio and Michaela Didi. Then we have Karen Enos, our senior teacher, and Jenna Zero Coster, EDD, as the curriculum coordinator. And lastly, we have Nicole Smith and Nicole Vaughn Tosi to round off our teachers here at Dighton Rehoboth within the mathematics department. Our next slide is going to take you through the math pathways in course sequence that we highly recommend students take throughout their four years at Dighton Rehoboth. As you can see on our pathways chart, each grade level has different ways that they can take their four math classes. We do have a four year math requirement and a lot of students do choose to double up their sophomore year, whether it is in geometry and algebra two, geometry and honors algebra two, or Honors Geometry and Honors Algebra 2. Coming in as freshmen, they tend to take Honors Geometry, Honors Algebra 1, or College Algebra 1. As you look through the flowchart, if you have any questions about your child entering the high school, 
please do not hesitate to contact any one of the math teachers here at the high school. Our next slide goes on to show you how our AP classes have done in the past years. AP Calculus and AP Statistics are the two AP courses that are offered in the Mathematics Department. Next, we have our MCAS scores from 2019. As you can see, we had an average growth of 55% and an average math score of 508. 508 is right at, with the meeting expectations, where anything above 530 is ex exceeding expectations. So as you can tell by the growth chart in comparison to the state, our meeting expectations had a percent of 57 and the state was only at 45. So as you take a close look, um, one of our main key points of importance throughout our department is that we do focus on having our students learn skills that they can approach MCAS, SAT, and ACT with to be successful. And lastly, communication. We all have active ways in which you can communicate with us. The main way is through email, and all of our emails are first initial, last name at drregional.org. We also actively use the X2 Parent Portal. Many teachers in the department also use the Remind app, as well as Google Classroom. If you have any questions over the next year or so that involve your child or student, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Hello, my name is Al Supple. I'm one of two automotive teachers here at Dighton Rehoboth. Welcome to the Dighton Rehoboth High Open House. We have a facility here consisting of five lifts, a secondary bay for alignments, an alignment machine that's state of the art, a wheel balancer that was just recently purchased within the last year, again state of the art for doing today's modern wheels and tires. We also have a road force balancer which is an excellent tool in resolving vibrations and the types of complaints that we often get here in New England. We generally have 10 to 15 students in the shop at one time and they all have assignments whether it's working on customer cars or doing shop projects or perhaps overhauls such as our most recent one uh, on a five-speed manual transmission. Of course that is uh, somewhat advanced so uh, the seniors are the ones uh, working on that particular uh, rebuild project. We like to keep the shop full. We like to have cars come in. Uh, probably uh, we can handle four to five cars a day, depending on the type of work that's needed. Uh, the students are very enthused when they get to work on customer cars. It just makes it that much more realistic, and uh, it certainly seems to beat some of the, uh, the projects that we uh, also need to teach to keep them uh, up to speed on today's automotive technology. So uh, right now we're working on at least three different cars trying to resolve some drivability problems. One has a noise, one has, um, well, shall we say, um, <laughs> a lot of work that's needed and uh, we're starting off with just wheels and tires to try to get it to roll down the road straight. So basically, um, <clears throat> in addition to uh, the five bays, we also have extensive bench work and floor space and that allows us to complete those other uh, shop projects that are necessary to train today's students. You'll also find that we're ASC certified as well as NATEF certified. Uh, that's the highest level of certification. And uh, with that comes uh, a much more in-depth uh, study of automotive technology. And uh, basically, um, right now, uh, we're running freshmen sophomore, junior, and seniors in the shop. Uh, gets a little crazy, but uh, the kids seem to enjoy it. And uh, other than the OSHA training that we uh, have to make sure the sophomores receive and finish, uh, the shop's generally busy all day long. So uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, our little uh, tour of the shop, and I hope this is something that perhaps if one of you are children are considering for a career that uh, you would come talk to one of us, myself or 
Mr. Strojny, and uh, we can give you more information on the automotive program here at Dighton Rehoboth. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to World Languages at Dighton Rehoboth Regional High School. I am Mr. Whisperwind. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the faculty, the languages, requirements before and after high school, benefits and other perks, and what the classes offer. Uh, here we have Mr. Augusto, Portuguese teacher, Ms. Keen, Spanish teacher, Ms. Lowell, Latin teacher, Mr. Sousa, Portuguese and Spanish teacher, and myself, Mr. Whisperwind, your Spanish teacher. We have three languages that we offer, and they are all equally valuable. If you want to learn Latin, it will open the door to critical thinking and the language used in law, science, and philosophy. Portuguese is spoken by millions of spe native speakers uh, that live in the United States and abroad. In, it is invaluable in a region uh, due to the uh, amount of immigrants that live here with us that have contributed to uh, the neighboring towns. The Spanish language is spoken it is the fourth most spoken language in the world, and uh, it is invaluable anywhere in the country. Um, and speaking a second language in general will make you very marketable. There are requirements to get placed in a higher class than Spanish one uh, or Portuguese one. It depends on your recommendations from your middle school teacher. Next, in order to graduate uh, from high school, you need to have taken a certain amount of courses. And going to college and having some languages in your portfolio will definitely increase your odds of getting into a college, uh, one of these colleges. Next, I have here the requirements for middle school. Students who have passed the uh, first uh, Spanish or first Portuguese in eighth grade will receive a recommendation from their teacher, which will allow them to start uh, at the second year of said language. To graduate from high school, you're required to have two years of uh, world languages. And then once you graduate, uh, to get into competitive colleges, you might need at least two years of foreign language in high school. Here are some perks that come with our world languages department. Um, we all have clubs. We all have honor classes. We all offer travel opportunities and we uh, host cultural events. And for every language, there are national exams. Here are the clubs. We have the Portuguese club, the Spanish club, Latin club, and the French club. That although we don't have a class at the moment, we do offer a club which can expose you to the language and culture. Here are some images from the trips to Spain and Portugal, Paris, and regional trips to Rhode Island and to New York. So let's talk about, a little bit about the classes. Uh, Mr. Augusto's mo mostly physical traditional class, uh, he uses uh, Eurosheet's incentives for participation, uh, contributions in the classroom. Uh, they do mostly group of work. Next, we have Ms. Keen. Ms. Keen has a combination of digital and traditional classes. Uh, also with mixed working styles, some, sometimes working individually or sometimes in group. Next, we have Ms. Lowell. Ms. Lowell offers Latin classes and some Spanish classes. They're mostly digital. There's extra credit available and there's a mixed working style. 
in Mr. Sousa's Portuguese and Spanish classes. It is also a mixed style of classes. He offers extra, extra credit and it is mixed working styles. And in my classes, we, uh, the Spanish classes, we offer a uh, digital classroom, uh, exclusively di digital, um, extra credit for exceeding contributions and mostly group work. Here are our contacts if you need any more information. And now I will present to you uh, my students who volunteer to be here with us today. Um, let's uh, invite Mary in. Hi there. Thank you, Mary, for coming. I wanted to ask you, what do you like about world languages? I just love the fact that I'm being immersed in a different culture. I think it's so cool to learn about what life is like somewhere else and learn to speak a different language where I can find other words that mean the same thing as words that I already know. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your contribution. You're very welcome. Thank you for being an awesome teacher. Oh. Um, let's uh, now invite Colin in. Hey, Colin. Hi. So um, how, how do you think that being in a world languages class in, in high school will help you? Um, I think with getting into different colleges, it can help you get accepted to the colleges. And later on in life, it can make you more marketable to different jobs if you're bilingual. Thank you very much, Colin. Thank you for being here, both of you. Um, and thank you for tuning into this video. If, you if you'd like to read the information with detail, feel please feel free to look at our recording. At, uh, my apologies to our, our presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, please send us an email. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Hi, my name is Mr. Duby. I am one of the carpentry teachers here at Dyke Rehoboth High School in the carpentry shop. Uh, as a freshman, you'll come in, see if you like the shop at all. You'll get to use some of the tools, make a small project. Sophomore year, you will come in, the main focus will be power and hand tools, be able to work independently. Uh, we'll, we'll show you the different materials that we have that we use, and you'll also be certified and take a class in OSHA 10. Third year, the main focus is framing, and you'll all make a scale model house, like the one behind me. Senior year, you will go outside, we do a lot of outside projects, and if you choose, you can choose co-op as well. Uh, hope to see you here.
my name is Mrs. Nardozzi. I'm the drafting, design, and engineering teacher here at DR. Uh, freshman year, we learn how to use AutoCAD, and we do some two-dimensional drawings first. We end up transitioning into three-dimensional modeling, and the three-dimensional models actually get 3D printed. We use Inventor, and we also use Onshape. Junior year, we switch over to architecture and interior design. So you guys will draw some floor plans, we'll build some physical models of houses, um, and we get to learn that. Senior year, you pick your own topic that you uh, develop, and I help you kind of dig deeper into some knowledge there. I hope you enjoyed the virtual tour, uh, and I look forward to seeing seeing you in person. Thank you. Welcome to the science department's open house. We are our expanding department. We have three new members this year. We have Mr. Tom Ranley, we have Ms. Angela Triani, and Ms. Delita Tomalini. The science curriculum is focusing on students being able to do a lot of different skills in science. We have a lot of problem solving. We want to see them be able to apply their knowledge and we want them to be lifelong learners. In order to graduate from Jane Rehoboth, you have to take three full years of science or 15 credits worth of courses. You do have to successfully complete your biology MCAS, which is typically taken your freshman year. The freshman curriculum covers topics including ecology, genetics, molecular genetics and DNA, evolution, and cells. These topics would be included on the biology MCAS exam. In 2021, over 75% of our students successfully passed the biology MCAS, with 20% earning advanced scores and over 50% earning proficient scores. We also offer many advanced placement courses starting in 10th grade. We offer AP Biology 10th, 11th, and 12th. In 11th grade, they can take AP Chemistry or they can take AP Environmental Science. And in their senior year, they can also take AP Physics. We have an outstanding AP program. Our honors program, you can start with honors biology in grade nine and follow the honors route all the way through. You'll follow by honors chemistry, and then we offer honors physics, offers and honors anatomy and physiology, as well as in the senior year, honors physics and honors anatomy and physiology. A college prep student would start in biology during their freshman year. In grade 10, they have the choice of taking chemistry, physical science and or biology. In grade 11, students would be eligible to take physics, environmental science, earth science, or forensics. And by grade 12, the students have many choices, including environmental science, marine biology, and zoology. We have additional offerings within the science department that could be taken during several years while the student is here with us. Marine biology, zoology, and forensics are some of our electives. The advanced placement offerings in science, once again, are biology, chemistry, environmental science, and physics. Students taking these classes are challenging themselves and are expected to take the college board's exam in that particular subject in May taking advanced placement classes and getting a score of a three or higher will generally allow the student to be able to pass that course or skip it when they get to college. Please reach out to any of us if you have additional questions about the science offerings.